Hello, my name is Jared Coleman. I'm a PhD student in the Autonomous Networks Research Group at USC, and I'm going to be talking about the basics of Tendermint, a blockchain platform that I use in my research. So first, to introduce the blockchain in general, blockchain technology lets us run distributed applications without centralizing trust at any one node in the network. Each node maintains its own ledger of all the transactions that have occurred in the system, and each node is incentivized to independently verify those transactions in different ways, depending on the consensus protocol of the blockchain. So Bitcoin and other proof of work blockchains do this by making the validation process expensive to some degree. Nodes have to solve computational puzzles in addition to verifying blocks to compensate the rewarded for doing this work. But the idea is that the cost to solve these puzzles is cheap enough for people to do honestly, but prohibitively expensive for a cyber attack where nodes fake multiple identities. Tendermint uses a proof of stake system where semi-trusted validators in the network are given voting power related to their stake in the system. The idea is that if nodes are invested in the system, they're not going to attack it. Smart contracts are another important piece of blockchain technology. They're essentially programs stored on the blockchain, which nodes will execute as soon as some conditions are met. Tendermint supports smart contract behavior by allowing any deterministic state machine to be replicated across nodes through its protocol. So Tendermint is really two things, Tendermint Core and the Application Blockchain Interface, or ABCI. Tendermint Core is the actual consensus engine and protocol of Tendermint. It works like practical Byzantine fault tolerance for those who are familiar, but with regularly rotating leaders. It tolerates up to one third of the nodes failing arbitrarily and it's a proof of stake protocol. So there's no mining and validators may or may not have equal voting power. That's up to you, the application developer. The ABCI is the part most developers are interested in. This is the interface that allows your app to communicate with Tendermint Core and ensure that it's properly replicated across all correct nodes in the network. Your application must be deterministic, but otherwise Tendermint can replicate any state machine that implements these methods. By the way, these are just a few of the required or more common methods. There are many more that you can implement for more complex applications. So the check transaction method is responsible for checking that a transaction is properly formatted, has correct signatures, etc. This is the only of the four methods that receives transactions before consensus has been run on them. So this method shouldn't actually modify the application state at all. If you return an error code from this method, it won't be included in a block. The deliver transaction is what they call the workhorse of your application. This is, this is the method that takes a transaction and modifies your application state. In a cryptocurrency application, for example, it might check account balances and then change the state accordingly. Deliver transaction gets called for every transaction in the block and then commit is called. Commit persists the application state and is responsible for computing the hash of the application state and returning it. This hash can later be used to validate queries. So the query method is used to query a piece of the application state. For example, the balance of a single account. Ideally, it should, be, it should include some kind of proof that the piece of the application state it's returning actually belongs to a certain application state with an, with an application hash, but this isn't required. In practice, Merkle trees are often used for this. This diagram provided by Tendermint does a really good job at explaining the whole system, so I'm going to use it to go over the consensus algorithm. So users submit transactions to a certain node, and those transactions are first run through your application's implemented check transaction method. If the transaction is valid, it gets put into the mempool to wait to be included in a block. When it's a validator's turn to propose a new block, it selects some transactions from its mempool, perhaps even prioritizing some over others based on some conditions, and proposes the block. Then three rounds of voting occur. This is very similar to the well-known practical Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm. The block is broadcast to all validators and each votes on whether or not the block is valid. They broadcast their votes to the rest of the network and wait for two thirds of the nodes to respond with their votes. 
if more than two thirds of the validators respond with a positive pre-vote, then every correct node broadcasts a positive pre-commit, whether or not it voted positively in the pre-vote round. Finally, a validator receives pre-commits from two thirds of the validators, then it commits the block to the chain and begins running the transaction through your application's implemented methods. So deliver transaction is called for each transaction in the block and then commit is called. Note that by the time your deliver transaction and commit methods are called, the block has already been committed to the blockchain. So invalid transactions might be included in the block, but you get to decide how they affect the application state. So in part two of this presentation, I'll go over a demo complete with a full node, a custom ABCI application, a client, and a small GUI that you can run on your system without installing anything. Just open the project in Gitpod by going to this URL in your browser. The link should also be available in the video description. I'll see you in the next video.